Good evening and welcome to the regular scheduled meeting of the Mayor and Council. Today is August 19th, 2014 and I am very glad to see so many here in the audience and to those at home. Uh, hello. I hereby announce and request that such be included in the minutes of this meeting that notice of the time, date, and place of this meeting has been prominently posted on the bulletin board at Borough Hall as of January 10th, 2014. Mail to the Times, the Star Ledger, the Courier News, the Alternative Press, and the Patch, and mail to any persons requesting the same in accordance of the Open Public Meetings Act. For those who are here, would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would ask that you remain standing as we have tonight's invocation read by Mrs. Ellen McGovern, our borough administrator. Lord, we are meeting tonight to conduct matters of importance to our residents. Write our hearts and our minds in the spirit of fairness, right thought, and speech. Report your supreme wisdom upon our activities so that our affairs may lead to successful conclusion. May your spirit guide us and may your grace abound in us. Thank you for being our source of guidance now and forever. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Could we have a roll call, please? Kevin Morris? Here. Rosie Hugo? Present. Tom Cranes? Here. Kevin Levine? Here. Kevin Mitchell? Jack Malmore? Here. Here. Thank you. All right. Um, I first would like to have a motion to accept the minutes of the meeting that we had last month, July 15th, 2014. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, we're going to start off tonight's meeting um, with some of our presentations and proclamations. So I'm going to come over to the podium. first one is going to be our volunteers of the month and for those of you who watch us regularly um, you know we've been doing this for several years now where we take some time at the beginning of each of our monthly meetings um, to draw attention to individuals who we think um, epitomize the best that Fanwood has to offer and we've been doing this now for several years and we really try um, to come across our community um, with individuals who do a whole array of things that we think uh, gives them a moment to be recognized here in front of the mayor and the council. Um, tonight is very special because we're not going to just be honoring one or two or three. We actually have five individuals of which four are here tonight. Um, and I'd like to call forward the gentlemen that are here in the audience here. I'd like to call forward Alan Ebersol, Robert Germinder, Ted Marquat, and Joe Schott. Gentlemen. Alan's not here. Alan's not here. Yes, yes. He, he snuck in. He oh, he did. did. Yes, very quietly. Yes. Very quietly, Mr. Ebersol Great. snuck in. <laughs> I know, <laughs> which was so unusual. <laughs> um, together, um, they make up uh, the Flintlocks. Um, and as you can tell, um, they have the shirts that attest to who they are. Um, they all are Fanwood residents, and they are called the Flintlocks for the Boy Scouts of America. There's 40 members, all retired scouters, who are aged 60 to well into their 80s, into their 90s. 92, so the old, uh, 92 years, that is wonderful. Nine, right on the heels. The Flintlocks were organized in March of 1988 and are part of the Wanchong Area Council. And these gentlemen meet on a weekly basis to repair docks and buildings, the shower houses, the tent platforms, the picnic tables um, up at Camp Winnebago. Um, Alan is a, uh, one of the founding members. 
And, but beyond that, you know, what they do for the Boy Scouts and their love of the outdoors and cultivating young boys to be respected men as they go older, they've also volunteered for the borough. And each of them in their own way are so talented and have truly, I think, embraced what living in family is all about over the decades that you have been here. They are, each of them are very talented craftsmen. They have refurbished the antique sleighs that we bring out onto the lawn each Christmas that are part of what was here on the grounds, which was the old hotel. Um, they worked on the carriage house over the years that needed help there, one of our oldest buildings in the uh, town of Fanwood. You know, they've um, offered you know, their services countless times over and over. Um, their families are here, you know, who give back into the community themselves. You know, we have the one who's a photographer, one who's involved with recycling. Um, Mr. Marquardt and I spent a lot of time together when I first became mayor. He was very uh, active in watching what we were doing here. Working and on the budget. Working on the budget, yes. He was part of my first uh, citizens budget review um, committee. You know, we have members of the families who are volunteer firemen, you know, and it's just been, um, it's really great. So we thought that this would be a really nice, gesture for us to take a few minutes to tip our hats to all of you, to thank you for what you have done and to know um, that it doesn't go unacknowledged. Um, in fact, we want to embrace it and we want to make sure that we let the community know and say thank you. A proper and public thank you for all your years of service. And we have for you something. Well, exactly, and as we said, this is a print of the uh, train station, which is the oldest train station in Union County. And I, we picked this as a gift to our volunteers because when people think of Vanwood on the outside, they think of this building, and we think of this as sort of the gem. And so we want you to know when you hang this in your house that we just think the world of each and every one of you and want to say this. thank you very, very much. We also worked on this. <clears throat> As we said, the the oldest is 92, but the average age is 77. And I like to say, for the first time in my life, I'm above average. <laughs> <laughs> we do a lot of good stuff. We have a great time doing it. And we want to thank everyone for the acknowledgement. And that will keep us on the tips of our toes as we keep going along. Thanks so much. <laughs> my hope that the next generation of the Flintlocks are out there in our community um, and will find the time to do what these men did over the decades that they have been here as they were raising their families and holding down full-time jobs. They still managed to come together. They still managed to find time to take projects. Um, and we hope in the spirit of that dedication and volunteerism that the next generation is watching tonight. Um, and so they can carry on the good work that you men have done. Um, our next one, we're going to do a, a little special commendation uh, for a special young lady that lives in the borough of Fanwood. And um, I guess maybe it was about two years ago, were you here? Um, I'd like to for come forward, Kelsey O'Connor, please. Kelsey is a... Um, <laughs> um, is a very talented young lady that lives here in Fanwood. 
um, and she is being honored tonight for her high scholastic achievement as one of the top honor students in the high school, um, going for her gold star, her gold gold star awards. Um, she is a champion Irish step dancer, and she actually travels the United States and internationally, um, and she competes um, on a very high level. And she was here not that long ago uh, because they had actually won one of the world competitions and brought the globe that she had won for her Irish step dancing. Um, and she also does a lot of extensive community service. So we know how important it is um, as we honor the Flintlocks, but yet again, it's all the different generations that we have here in Fanwood. And to make sure that when they do something special um, and we live in the community such as ours, that they know that they have a governing body that will take a few minutes and just say publicly thank you because it does matter. All the hard work does matter and getting public recognition um, is something to be very proud of and not to be shy of. So um, to Kelsey, we really hope that your future holds for you good fortune and success and that everything that you do, you remember where you came from here in Fanwood, New Jersey. Congratulations. Thank you. For our next award, um, we have another young lady that um, I am very proud to um, call forward. And uh, in order to help us make this, we're also going to uh, call forward first our chief, our chief of police, Richard Trigo. And I'd like to call forward um, Emily Howard. Emily is being recognized tonight publicly um, for everything that she did. <laughs> exactly. If we're going to be on TV, we're going to be on TV. <laughs> um, Emily is being honored tonight for all of her hard work and dedication and leadership experience and really taking the bull by the horns and executing our wonderful National Night Out. National Night Out Against Crime uh, was just held this month earlier in August. Um, it is a national event that is meant for people to come out of their homes. The idea is to put your porch lights on one, uh, one night, have all the neighbors come outside of their porch to meet each other and greet the police department and sort of stand up against crime. Um, and it's kind of grown over the years that when it first started to having uh, large community events. And Emily really did such a fantastic job and I'm gonna really let the chief go into some of the specifics before I hand her her award. Uh, first off, between, I don't want to uh, touch base on anybody's age or anything, but our age, between me and Emily, ranges from 50 to 18. So you look great for 50 years old, so <laughs> I'll tell you that. Uh, with National Light Out, uh, we started doing it years ago, and every year we try to make it bigger and better. This year, Emily was our unpaid volunteer, and she met with me several times a week to go over what she was planning on doing. Emily's going to a sophomore year at Moravian, and she's interested in uh, party planning as her major. If uh, the, what she did at National Light Out is any indication of how that uh, career will go, I'm sure it's going to be successful. But like I said, every year we take it a little step further. Emily this year basically always geared it towards the children. This year, Emily went out and solicited from the businesses in town, which we are very grateful to. We were able to get donations and gift certificates to give to the parents. We always had the PBA giving something to the children, whether it's scooters or bicycles. Emily took it to the next level, and as I'm riding through town, I see her hustling up and down the street going into the different stores. So I want to take my hat off to you and say thank you very much, and what an asset to the community. And when we signed, when we had our uh, exit interview, we signed a little paper. That means you're going to be doing it free for the next day. <laughs> okay? So I thank you from the bottom of my heart, from all the family residents and the police department. Like thank you. Okay. <laughs> so, so um, we do really don't give many of these out. So it really is my pleasure to give you a uh, our civic recognition award here in the borough of Fanwood. Um, 
we believe that a community cannot sustain itself without the civic dedication that nourishes its existence. And Emily, in recognition of all of your outstanding service rendered to the community of Fanwood, uh, for all of your outstanding planning, implementation, and facilitating Fanwood's 2014 National Night Out, um, this recognition and this award is given to you. We know that you're going to go far and do great work, and we look forward to working with you on next year's event. <laughs> um, in my experience of planning National Night Out, I learned a lot that it's actually really hard to get money from people, <laughs> and that I am going to use this experience in my event planning in the future and hopefully getting a paid internship this <laughs> next coming summer. But thanks for everything, and everybody who came out really appreciated it. Thank you. It really um, is, is wonderful that we are able to, um, like I said, take some time to um, say, publicly say thank you. Because a lot of these things that get done in our community are really on the backs of volunteers who don't get paid. Um, and being a small community, it really means a lot. Um, our next recognition, uh, I'm gonna call up a gentleman who really personified giving back to his community for decades himself until he decided to go off into retirement, grow his hair long, kick back, you know, on the beach, um, get a tan. <laughs> um, I'd like to call forward Greg Cummings, please. Um, Greg Cummings um, has been, or was, our longtime planning board chairman. Um, when I first took office, <laughs> when, I, when I first took office a decade ago, oh yeah, exactly, <laughs> um, Greg was the planning board chairman. And along with Councilman Molinar, it, you know, at the time Jack and he were really fighting for, you know, the downtown with a couple of other people that really were trying to put forward this vision. Um, and so when I became the mayor and we sort of doubled down on what we thought this community could be and how we could get um, some economic development done along the South Avenue corridor and, and have living opportunities exist in a town downtown that never had them before and bring in, you know, a wide array of retail opportunities, um, you know, we embarked on that journey together. And as I said to him, I hadn't seen him in a little while, we more or less have accomplished what we set out to do. You know, we look to the recent recognition we got in the New York Times um, as being, you know, a great community to live in. We look at the um, New Jersey Monthly as rated number three to raise a small family. Um, and we also, you know, received this past June a New Jersey Smart Growth Award for the way that we did our development down here um, in the right way. Um, and Greg was there um, every step of the way. But one of the things that Greg did um, in his spare time is that he's a photographer. And he would take, when I first started, I did the Christmas cards. And he had the most beautiful pictures that he would um, take. And so he's here tonight, um, not necessarily for his civic involvement, because we kind of gave him that when he decided to retire. We'll take another one. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's been a while, and I recently saw that he actually had won um, a major contest here in Union County. So um, I reached out, and I said, he's got to come home here, um, and he has to do this. And um, I'm going to just, he won a phot photography contest that was issued by the County of Union. Senior? Yeah, senior art con uh, contest. A senior art contest, and he came in first place. So right off the bat, we like to have first place at Broadway Union County. Um, and I'm just going to read a little bit about it. Uh, Fanwood's Greg Cummings says he was on his way to dinner in the Irish coastal village when he looked out onto the horizon and he saw a lighthouse. It all came together in an instant. The retired marketing and sales executive said the result, the first place photograph in this year's Union County Senior Arts Exhibit. Um, Greg has been active around Fanwood, including volunteering on the planning board in our clean communities. 
um, and he's always been part of our holiday decoration committee, always hanging our wreaths around the train station and here in town. Um, and he always has a camera with him uh, nearby. He likes to develop themes with his photography and continually adds to those collections. And he's most comfortable shooting animals, landscapes, and objects. So, so, Craig, tonight, in recognition of Greg's artistic achievements as a photographer winning first place in the annual Union County Senior Citizens Art Contest and your extensive accomplishments in the community service as a borough volunteer, we hope your future holds many bright things for you and that we hope that we see you over and over again. Thank you. I, uh, I had a small acceptance speech prepared, <laughs> but as I was walking up, I got a text from Jack Mullen, and he said that, Greg, don't talk too much. We need to go have a beer <laughs> at O'Brien's, and it'll be a Guinness, because that's what I was drinking when I took that photography in uh, Ireland. Right. Thank you. continue on um, our meeting. We have three pieces of correspondence that I'd like to move as noted. Move to note and file. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Um, moving on under our monthly council reports, I will ask Councilman Levine to bring us up to date on administration and finance. Uh, yes, uh, Mayor. Mayor. Um, we actually do not have a payment, a tax collection report this month, so we'll have two next month. But I can report payment of claims uh, that will move to resolve the claims in the amount of $1,940,650. I mean, have been listed on the bill list and recorded in the files of Borough Hall and approved by the Chairman of the Appropriate Committee, DK. Second. Uh, second, I have a roll call, please, Yes. 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 Under uh, public safety, uh, Councilwoman Mitchell is on vacation at the beach, so he's not here tonight to bring us up to date on that. Under public work, Councilman Ewell. Thanks, Mayor. Let's see. I have the uh, report from uh, Director Clint Dixon uh, in the past month. Uh, our public works department um, performed sweeping operations on the north side of the train station. Park, 2nd Street, Phillipson, Midway, Watson and Russell. Um, they also um, perform pothole repairs um, on Shasta Place, Lindy Place, Allen Street, Finder, uh, Woodruff, St. John's, Woodland Avenue, Linda Place, and Lanier Road. Um, that is a, a highlight of the country floor. Uh, many Van Williams who come back to the borough from vacation are going to notice a lot of construction projects going on. Mitten Circle is scheduled to commence um, uh, later that uh, maybe a little bit before. Hunter Avenue is being currently worked on. They're uh, finishing up the drainage work on Hunter Avenue. Um, we're awarding tonight South Glenwood. So we're going to be doing South Glenwood in the uh, fall. And I would say they should start repaving the debt from the uh, drainage project. Um, so they should start repaving that. Uh, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock at the Carriage House, I'm meeting the residents of the Grand Avenue to talk about paving their street. Uh, I'm going to have representative uh, from American Water to talk about some of the things that are going to be going on on uh, the Grand Avenue specifically, but if people have questions about it, the uh, American Water Capital Improvement Program in the borough of general, I'm sure Mike will be glad to answer those questions. So uh, that's 7 o'clock at the Parish House. Um, speaking of American Water, they are continuing the capital program here in the borough, and they're going to start um, doing the uh, mainline cleaning on North Carolina Terrell. Let's see what else we've got. Um, ah, that's my favorite time. 
It's like the holidays are coming up. <laughs> it's time for the full place pickup program. You can get your application online at our website. Um, you can download that. And the north side is going to start on September 15th, and the south side is going to be done on the 22nd of September. So, north side, September 15th, south side, September 22nd. You can go online, get the application, you can submit it. I don't think you can, it's the same thing. Yes, I yeah, yeah, it's not the same thing. So I would encourage people to, to do the bulk waste program. Uh, a lot of times what people do is they go to the weather on it. Like if, if you feel like you don't have enough stuff or enough junk to justify the whole thing, you can team up with a neighbor, share the cost, put it, you know, display the permit in the window and put the put your stuff out there and then uh, you know, the ball is going on because they don't have that many Thank you. Um, moving on under land use and conservation. Yeah, not a lot. Just as uh, Greg Cummings said, if you uh, look on South Avenue, you can see the, the new building being uh, built, and that's uh, great to see. It's nice to see the South Avenue frontage being uh, well done for now. But I always say uh, downtown is never done. It's uh, organic and it's always improving. So there's always more to do. So uh, have a look when you come back from vacation. It's uh, incredible how quickly a building can go up. But it's the outside, the shell is the easy part. The inside takes the longest, but it's really uh, it's nice to see. Uh, the planning board is not that busy, but I don't consider that a bad thing because people need use variances or bulk variances. That means our code is not good, so our code must be fairly good because not a lot of not a lot of people need variances, but a lot of buildings going on. So that's a, that's a good thing as well. And uh, with that, that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Barnes, Recreation. Um, thank you, Mayor. And um, on the recreation front, I uh, just want to point out um, later tonight we're going to be uh, projecting the state board park bids. And that's because they can for our uh, So that's that project. And also, the Vanderwood uh, 5K is coming up. And if you have uh, seen me running around, I have been training and I will be entering. So, uh, it's a good time. Um, uh, the summer movie series is wrapping up. Uh, that's all for the recreation. Uh, also for the fire department. Uh, there were 30 calls last month. Uh, there's one new fireman, and he's my next door neighbor. Uh, as the mayor said, uh, lots of what we see and, and get accomplished in Fanwood is on the backs of uh, volunteers. So I want to. Oh, and there's also two other new members on the right. So there will be three additions to our, our fire department. Uh, our fire department does a great job all the time. I can't express to every member of the fire department how much we appreciate you. Um, and lastly, on the historical commission, I missed the last meeting, but uh, one thing I do want to point out is that uh, Mr. Kevin and I are trying to work with the architect who has designed the new doors for the carriage house to come and get the presentation. Okay. I've seen the plans. The Historical Preservation Commission has seen the plans, but I, I think the council can see the plans. I think the council can see the plans. I think the council can see the plans. That concludes my report. Thank you. Council um, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I had the pleasure yesterday of stopping in at uh, the first annual uh, Senior Shindig that was sponsored by the Chelsea and by the Borough of Fanwood. Our senior coordinator, Paulette Drogan, was there. Uh, it was basically a, a, a flimsy excuse to get people together in the middle of the summer to socialize and to do something other than watch TV. And it was great. We had a, There was a great turnout there. Probably 50, 60 or more people came and went over the three hours. There was ice cream. There was a great entertainer. And, uh, and it was really nice to be there. A lot of members of the Family Seniors Club uh, were there. And it's always good to see Joe Bruno and his group. Um, <clears throat> the health... The Board of Health had its regular meeting um, two weeks ago, and the item that took up most of the discussion was a proposal by the Board to introduce an ordinance at their October meeting that would require any business that sells e-cigarettes to purchase uh, a $200 a year permit. Um, this is has a twofold purpose. Uh, the pur purpose number one is that <coughs> e-cigarettes 
as far as the Board of Health are, is concerned and as far as I'm concerned, are just another nicotine delivery system. Uh, they're marketed to children. Uh, they don't have the negative effects of tobacco and smoke, and the proponents say that it's actually an alternative to smoking, which it is, but uh, it does deliver nicotine to the body. Nicotine is highly addictive, and it's just one more way to get one more thing that we don't need uh, anybody to be addicted to. So as a way of maybe dissuading that, uh, the Board of Health wants to introduce an ordinance that would require this permit of $200 a year. The, the money would actually go to fund um, smoking enforcement program that the board does and what they've done in the past is they recruit underage um, people under 19 which is the, the the age at which you're supposed to be able to buy cigarettes in new jersey they recruit young people to go into stores to attempt to buy cigarettes if they do buy cigarettes they come out and then somebody from the board of health goes in and writes them a citation this is a program that they've done in the past which they have no money for this this program would uh, these permits would, would uh, fund that uh, several surrounding communities are in the process of adopting this very same permit. In fact, the, the town of Summit, is uh, they're going to require a $500 permit fee because they want to completely make it as difficult as possible for merchants to do that. So if anybody's interested in testifying, there is going to be a public hearing on this. They haven't said it yet. The next um, Board of Health hearing is in October, and they'll release the kind of the schedule for that. Um, if you're interested, uh, it, it should be an interesting hearing. Um, I don't have the rescue squad's uh, monthly report, but we did have um, a call last week uh, in which an individual overdosed on heroin, and for the first time, one of our police officers used uh, the new uh, drug that they've all been um, that they've all been issued here in Union County uh, called Narcan. That's a, a drug that's actually been used for many years by paramedics. It has the effect of almost instantaneously canceling the effects of the high caused by opiates, meaning heroin or morphine. Um, all police departments in Union County have it, I believe. They've all been trained. And uh, it, it, it worked just like it does in the PowerPoint. I mean, this gentleman was, he was out cold. He was barely breathing. He had a very low pulse. Um, Sergeant Gottlieb administered the Narcan as a spray that goes in first one nostril than the other. Within three minutes, uh, the effects had worn off. He was sitting up talking, and he was able to walk to the ambulance on his own steam. So there's definitely no doubt that this was a great program. Uh, at some point, EMTs are going to be trained uh, and will we'll be able to carry those too. But I just wanted to uh, take my hat off to Sergeant Guy. Like he, he did exactly what he was trained to do, and uh, he probably saved this guy's life. Uh, that's my opinion. We had that, you know, uh, there's actually um, quite a few articles that got that picked up in the media for years on the state of New Jersey because we just had gotten this issue, you know, and it actually does show you that it can save lives. It's actually been used in quite a few police departments. Mark was not the first. It's been used in Clark and Cranford and I think Rockland. But it was the first for our town right. and it certainly confirmed that it's a good program. It, uh, unfortunately, heroin addiction is a huge problem. The drug has become much more affordable. So, it's a good thing. Thank you. Very good. Um, one of the things that uh, the community is going to see in this mailbox is that they are going to I am very proud of the council. Actually, just got a copy of it tonight. Um, and we've been working on it for probably better part of six to nine months. And um, it's called the uh, Fanwood Citizen Report. And this Fanwood Citizen Report is the first of its kind for a municipality in the state of New Jersey to actually be issued. We have followed the guidelines of the Association of Government Accountants, or the AGA. And this is a national organization that puts out a very specific guidelines on producing citizen-centric reports as a method to demonstrate accountability um, and to answer some very uh, clear questions about what our priorities are in the community, um, what is the budget look like, what is our sources of revenue, what is our spending going to, what is the future of uh, the it's only supposed to be uh, four pages. It has to be done in a very specific um, format. And I am very proud that these will be 
um, showing up in the mailboxes of our residents. Um, this week, we actually just got it down for the next day. Um, where we're going out, and it's, um, it really is very great because, because it's going to be a very simple way um, for people to understand in a snapshot of how we're doing financially, um, as well as what our key initiatives are. Um, and it will really take, I think, a lot of questions that people will have over why we do certain things um, and answer them in a way that I think the right person um, can pick it up and understand it. So be on the lookout for this. This is all great. Um, and I guess one plug to September 28th. That's the 19th annual Fanny Wood Day. It is the last Sunday in September, and that's coming up before we actually know it. And all of the council and mayor will hopefully be standing there um, throughout the day at a table that we will have. Um, there'll be tons of contests, ranging from hula hoop contests to a little ball contest, um, to pizza and ice cream meeting, and it's one of our highlights of the year that we do here in Sandwich, and we're hard at work on that. Um, with that, I'd like to have a meeting to open up to the public. Any motion? Motion. Second. motion. Second. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, I'd like to call forward. <laughs> members of the public that wish to uh, talk about his agenda and his only business to put their hands on the website. Is he open for anything? Saying that there isn't any way I have a motion to close the meeting to the public. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Great. Um, we have one piece of correspondence under old business with uh, Councilman Levine. You will move under administration and finance? Yes. I call for second reading ordinance number 1413 power and request that the clerk have a produced affidavit of publication also read the ordinance by title. Ordinance amending chapter 252 of the family borough code relating to solid waste collection district number one. I move that a public hearing be held on second ordinance. Second. Second. To call forward any members of the public that wish to make comment on the solid waste amendment. Seeing that there isn't any, may I have a motion to close the meeting? Public All in favor? Aye. Yep. I move that this ordinance be adopted on second reading and final passage, and if adopted, be published and required by law. Okay. Second. Second. May I have a roll call for the public Yes. 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 Thank you. Um, moving on under our new business, uh, that comes in on the line, I said. Yes. yes. The consent yes. 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 agenda will be number 226. Not six. I'm um, dropping a second. Oh. 226. <laughs> Correct, ma'am? I think I think I think it's going to be correct. Right. Right. Parking, the parking is not being used. No, I think it's in the middle. That's why it's not through six. It's just, uh, for a second, it's in the one, two, 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 three, four, five. Yeah, it should be one, two, three, four, five, and six. Oh, do I have a different, do I have a different number? Yeah, yeah, it's a change from the agenda meeting. Ah, okay, I'm sorry, it's a different number. Yeah, one, two, three. Oh, okay. I was looking at the family. Yeah, yeah. I can set the agenda to item 136. Second. <laughs> we have a second on that, moving to the consent agenda number 136 on today's agenda. All right, can I have a second? Yes. All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Now, uh, for first reading, I introduce ordinance number 1414R. And request the title and be read by the public. I move the ordinance from the 14 hour be adopted on first reading, and if adopted, the clerk advertise the ordinance as required by law, and if the second reading of that ordinance is held at a public hearing at Royal Hall 
uh, on September 16, 2014, at 7 p.m. We're assuming they're up here to Second. Okay. All in favor? All right. Thank you. And I also introduced ordinance number 1415S and request title <coughs> uh, and text if necessary to be read by the clerk. I move that ordinance number 1415S be adopted on the first reading and if adopted, the clerk advertise the ordinance as required by law. And the second reading of said ordinance be held at a public hearing at the hall on September 16, 2014, at 7 p.m. or as soon thereafter as the matter is Second. Second. Um, Thank you. All right. Moving on. I move our motion 1408129, which is an award of the contract digital assurance certificate certification as the disclosure determination agent. Okay, may I have a second on that? Yeah, roll call. Please just move on that. Yes. 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 Yes.
I think that I would hope to stay to see what I thought was a very inflammatory editorial in the Scottish Plain Family Times um, accusing this council of playing politics when it came to trying to treat um, and defend these Scottish Plains. I am myself, as well as a couple of the council people, have had uh, conversations with the mayor of Scottish Plains as well as the council of Marinella. That's the 
if they fall over, if the kids knock them over them, and they break, the mercury is into the air already. And then you have to put them in your car and drive to New Providence or County or wherever the hazardous waste day is. I started that program here where they don't have to store them. They can bring them to us immediately. I built a building and they're boxed. And then I send them to a company in New York City where they are safely recycled, not broken, and the mercuries in them are not going into the air. But that's important. But you won't get that in curbside. CDs, DVDs, stupid little things like that. We collect them. Nobody else takes them. We take them. And we'll recycle them. They're not going to the landfill for the incinerator and all of them. Ink cartridges, another thing. Nobody takes ink cartridges. We take them. Piddly little things like that. Batteries. The county will take hearing aid batteries. And I need a hearing aid. I said to somebody I couldn't hear in the back road. Oh, you guys have speech impediments. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't have a hearing impediment. But, my point being that the seniors who wear the hearing aids, uh, they could get a cup full of batteries, and that could be a six-month supply, a, a teacup full of these little batteries, and they're dangerous. They're loaded with mercury. And the county wants them to put this in their car and drive six or seven or eight miles, wherever the host day is for the county's hazardous waste days and take them there. Well, they've never been there in their life before. They don't know where the place is. They're not going to take those, that cup full of hearing aid batteries to there. They're not going to be handled properly. They're going to end up going to the garbage. All of Union County's garbage goes to the incinerator in Rawlin. When these suckers hit that incinerator, they explode. They go up the smoke, up the stack into our air. That's the same air we're breathing here that they're breathing over there. So you start a program here. Make it easy for them to bring it to us. I can go up with two five-gallon buckets to wherever the hazardous waste day is. One person, instead of 200 seniors trying to find some place. But I guarantee that they'll get to be recycled. You don't get that if you have curbside. Uh, let's talk about, let's talk about personnel, people, human beings. I get people from the county probation. They have an office in Elizabeth and one in Plainfield. I get them from the Youth and Family Services. They're in Linden. They're 13 to 17 year olds. I get People from the Garwick court system, the Scotts Plains court system, the family court system, and the Clark court system. I don't know whether you knew all that. I have probably 40 people. I have to keep all their hours and time and report back to the various jurisdictions that they come from. But I sit them down. And I want them to learn something, and I tell them that. I tell them they're not criminals, they're stupid. And that's what they get, stupid. But they learn something when they're done. I have some that came back and volunteered when they finished their assigned hours. I got two men in, one this past Saturday, one this Saturday before. 600 hours apiece. Never had anybody that hot. I called the county to make sure it wasn't a typographical error, and it was not. 600 hours of a piece. One man is quite well to do. He has businesses uh, with offices all over the world, all in the Far East, South America, Africa. He's not some fly-by-night who doesn't know the difference between right and wrong. And uh, the one that came with him worked for him. Uh, 
I'm not going to go into why I have them. It's nobody's business, and I don't do that because I don't want to embarrass people. But I have this labor. It's free. You can afford to pay for all of these. I have Saturday detention from the school system. I went to the principal in the high school and said, you've got these kids sitting in the cafeteria looking at one another for four hours doing absolutely nothing. Why not make them productive and help their community? You wouldn't get this with curbside. Uh, I could go on and on about people. All right, here's a, another one. I have a group of honor society students. I have a dozen of them. And they have to perform community service, which is part of the honor society's requirements. So they are down there working on Wednesdays and Saturdays while there's no school. They'll be there on Saturdays when school starts. I have boys and girls for church, for, for uh, communion. They must put in community service hours. You wouldn't get any of this opportunity in a curbside world. The business don't deal with things like this. This is the real world that I'm telling you about, what you have got in your town. I've got to make notes now that I'm old. Um, I have Eagle projects. As you know, I'm in scouting. I'm starting my 79th year in scouting this month. And uh, Eagle Scouts have to do Eagle projects in order to advance. I've held off two boys because of the indecision as to where we were going as a recycling community. They're starting up now. They're going to build um, a building which is uh, 8 feet by 16 feet long, and that will be for the uh, shielding of the electronics. I had them in the snow last winter, and, and they were frozen to the ground. We couldn't even get them up. So I have got to build a shelter over it. I have another shelter that I have to build over the plastic bags that we bail because of the ultraviolet light. The uh, company that we... You want me to look this way? Oh, look at this, huh? All right. The company um, uh, that I'm dealing with uh, doesn't want the ultraviolet lights to destroy them. So we're going to do Eagle projects there. I have other Eagle projects. I want these boys to put their name on a plaque and nail it on here so that people 10 years from now know that this boy benefited this community. These are things that I'm trying to let you look at on the other side. And uh, I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Joe Maggie, 80 Hill Court Court. Can you follow that up? <laughs> well, I, I, th I don't think you're going to follow tonight. <laughs> one 91 year old is going to follow another. <laughs> <laughs> he said that he uh, he needed notes. I wrote, I wrote the whole thing out. <laughs> I promise you, I'll be a fraction of balance time. I love the passion that he, that he has us. Uh, I'm going to do posthumously uh, the life of a uh, Van Woodian. Uh, name is Alice uh, Harding, born 1879, died 1938. A Van Woodian with a national and an international reputation, but unmentioned in recorded history of fandom. The story begins about three years ago when Howard Drews gave the uh, Fanwood Museum three type business letters prepared by Alice Harding of Burnley Farms that he had purchased on eBay, an online auction. I, per I per pursued the, uh, the letters and found, f found the following. I had never heard of Alice Harding or Burnley Farms. The letters were written by a well-educated person 
and a plant selling for $50 in 1926 was a lot of money. Curiously, I went to the cost price index on Google, <laughs> and that number adjusted for inflation today would be $658. Three months later, I received a telephone call from a woman representing the Garden Club of Short Hills that featured exotic flowers. She was trying to find the location of Alice Harding, Burnley Farms in Fanwood, had inquired for information at Young's Paint Shop and was referred to me. I quickly mentioned a coincidence of having received for the Family Music Museum three Alice Harding letters written in 1926. Prior to that time, she had never before appeared in print or in any discussion of Fanwood's history. This woman, with her voice rising in excitement, she commented, you have letters of uh, Alice Harding? Would it be possible to see them? I responded in the affirmative, arranged for a meeting with her at the museum, and provided her with copies of the letters. If, she, if there were a horticulturist hall of fame, Alice Harding, Mrs. Edward Harding, would probably be a member. She was a member of the, at large of the Garden Club of America, a fellow of the Royal Cultural Society of Great Britain, the French government made her, um, you have to excuse me for my French, Chevalier du Mérite et de Col, in the rec recognition of her achievements in horticulture. She authored three books, Book of, Book of the Peony, Peonies in the Little Garden, and Lilacs in My Garden. Her husband, Edward, graduated from Harvard College Harvard Law School. He was active in the Wall Street firm of Campbell, Harding, Goodwin, and Danford. Alice died in 1938. Listen to this. Her obituary appeared in the New York Times. P Edward died in 1952, and his obituary appeared in the Westfield Leader. <laughs> <laughs> My curiosity was aroused to find where Burnley Farms had been located. I found considerable information about Alice in a Google search, but nothing about location of Burnley Farms. The authenticated answer I found in a copy of the 1920 Fanwood Census we have in the Fanwood Museum. It was on Terrell Road, but where along that long stretch of Terrell Road? There were no house numbers in Fanwood until the early 1930s. Again, the census provided the clues. The census has a numbered uh, sequence identifying the order in which the census taker went from house to house, and her house was third survey north of where, north, where Terrell Road intersected with King Street. Today, that is approximately where Campbell Ter Terrace intersects with Terrell Road. Now for the final irony. The uh, census lists two servants, aged 50, 6, and 60, living with the Hardings in the year 1920. The Hardings had no children. Under the column occupation, Edward is listed as an attorney, and Alice is listed as none, meaning no occupation. What an irony. An accomplished woman of her stature had not yet received the recognition in the official documents of the government that she would receive today. The short excursion into Fanwood history provided courtesy of Fanwood Museum. That was great. We got a lot of information tonight in our public sector. <laughs> You're not kidding. <laughs> I like it. It's like the public had their own meeting. Right. <laughs> they outshined the council. <laughs> I, I absolutely uh, think that's great. What a coincidence that you would get that phone call after getting those letters. That is amazing. Um, okay, so may I have a motion to close the meeting to the public if no one else wishes to come up at this point? Motion to close the meeting to the public. Second. All in favor? Aye. 
And I think that would be it. So um, we'll go to do some council comments. I guess we'll start with Councilman Molinar. I don't think I can follow that, so uh, <laughs> good night. <laughs> I just want to thank the volunteers of our rescue squad and the fire department for their service. President. Uh, I just want to say I hope everybody had a good summer and school's starting soon. I'll see everybody on that one. Good night. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I also just want to wish everybody a happy end to their summer. Uh, school's starting in about two weeks, so watch out for those little kiddies on the road. Don't rush the end of summer. We still have two weeks. <laughs> 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 good night, everybody. All right, so... Um, with that, I'll have a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Good night.